Hey guys, it's Haley, and welcome to another bookish video featuring my dog, Mochi. This is Mochi, he's scratching. Hey dude. Hey king. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to this video. I'm sure you know what it is by the title if you read it. This is going to be another edition of my ranking a thriller author's backlist series. So I'm ranking Ruth Ware's entire backlist, every book she's ever written. Also, <laughs> if you haven't noticed, I do have a new piece of jewelry on today. This is the first video I am filming as an engaged woman. <laughs> Cameron proposed uh, just a few days ago, so I thought I would show you guys my ring. <laughs> yes, we're engaged. I think we have some footage of the engagement, so I may be posting a vlog <laughs> about it soon, but yeah. I just wanted to say that out loud so I didn't get a million comments saying, hello, are you wearing an engagement ring? Yes, I am, <laughs> we're engaged. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into the ranking. First, I'm gonna go through all of Ruth Ware's books and tell you a synopsis and my rating and my thoughts about it. And then I will do a final ranking of best to worst at the end. So I'm gonna go in the order in which I read her books, not in the order in which they were published. The first Ruth Ware book I ever read was The Woman in Cabin 10. This follows a lady who's just kind of chilling, living her life. She's a little down on her luck, but she's like trying to figure it out, trying to live her career as like a nature photographer. She wants to work for like National Geographic. So she's kind of working her way up there. And then all of a sudden she experiences a break-in. Somebody breaks into her house. It's a very traumatizing experience. Experience. She wants to get away from it all and she ends up having this opportunity at work where she can go on this cruise kind of thing, this all expense paid vacation. I think it's like through the Swiss Alps or somewhere cold like that. And she goes on this boat and she's still having these traumatic PTSD style flashbacks of the break-in and she ends up witnessing something tragic happen on the boat and we come to find out that she is the only one that actually witnessed this thing she's a very unreliable narrator with her traumatic memories combined with her constant drinking we don't even know if what she saw was real none of the other passengers can trust her we don't know if there's actually somebody running around on this boat picking people off or if this is all just a symptom of her PTSD She's extremely paranoid and she's drinking a lot to cope with that. So we're figuring out that mystery. This book is the book that hooked me into reading Ruth Ware's entire backlist. I read this book I think three years ago at this point and I really loved it. I gave it four stars. It didn't have that five star feeling. I kept comparing it to The Girl on the Train, uh, which is the other popular book with an unreliable drunk traumatized narrator and I think I did like that one a little bit more so I gave this one a four star. Following that I read In a Dark Dark Wood and this book is crazy and I have extremely unpopular opinions about it so maybe don't trust my opinion on this one. I know everybody hates this book okay it follows this girl who was really close with this person in high school they kind of drifted away they had a falling out and then all of a sudden this girl asks her to be one of her bridesmaids she's trying to get her bridesmaids together because she's engaged just like me <laughs> and this girl is really surprised that her old friend would ask her to do this but she's like hey whatever so she goes on this bachelorette weekend that's taking place in this like beautiful modern glass house in the middle of the woods and weird things start happening. You get this uneasy feeling. They go to like shoot guns and people are drinking and acting like weird and possessive over the bride to be. Things are just all around weird and the ending is absolutely insane. I know a lot of people didn't like that, thought it was unrealistic, thought it was stupid, whatever, but I loved it. I was totally in for all of the crazy over the top drama with this one. Also, I loved the other like bridesmaids in the bachelorette party. They were just 
suburban bougie ladies that are so fun to make fun of and when they're creepy they're like really creepy and like sinister i don't know i just loved this book it was so fun definitely don't take it seriously definitely don't look for plot holes if you decide to read it just have a fun relaxing time reading this book i feel like if you read it by the pool or like on the beach that would be so nice and yeah i gave it five stars don't judge me i thought it was fun not a literary masterpiece okay I know, but I loved it. Following that, I read The Turn of the Key, and I actually went to go get this on release day because I had just finished In a Dark Dark Wood like a couple months before, and I was dying to read her new release, so I literally ran to Barnes & Noble and got it the day it came out. I was so excited, and this one definitely didn't disappoint. I also gave this one five stars. I loved everything about it. The vibes were immaculate. If you like ghosty horror movies, like A Haunting of Hill House, The Conjuring, uh, especially stuff with creepy little kids, like Annabelle, anything like that, you will love this book. This book follows a nanny who is hired to watch these two little girls in this smart house. And it's probably definitely for sure haunted and creepy things start happening. The two little girls are creepy. It's all around a really creepy book, but I absolutely loved it. The final twist at the end knocked my socks off. I'm obsessed with this book. It's so good. And it's based off the Turn of the Screw, which was a like classic horror novel written in, I don't know, like the 20s, something like that. Like it's really old. And a lot of things are based on the Turn of the Screw, including The Turn of the Key, The Turning, that horror movie that came out a couple years ago, and Bly Manor is actually based on The Turn of the Screw as well. So I actually read The Turn of the Key on release day whenever I was staying at Cameron's old apartment. He used to live in Dallas for an internship, so I was there and I was bored all day while he was at his internship literally read this entire book and immediately went to half price books after i finished it and got the lion game and i read this one the same day <laughs> literally read two ruth Ware books in one day because i was that obsessed with this woman's writing and i still am this book follows three friends that were super close in like their boarding school days it was like an all girls boarding school and they would like sneak out and get into shit and like all this stuff was happening somebody died there's like scandals and they all kind of drifted apart because they were like "Ooh, that was crazy I was probably fucked up like that kind of vibe um, they were just wanting to leave that stuff in the past but they have their like 10-year reunion I believe I think it's their 10-year reunion there's no synopsis on the back whatsoever so this is all coming from my brain um, <laughs> I think it's their 10, maybe five year reunion. So they all get together and go back to their boarding school. They're spending time together. They're rehashing secrets from the past, trying to find out what actually happened back then. And creepy things start happening in present day as well. So there's kind of those dual mysteries going on at the same time. I love this. I love the vibes. It takes place on like a seaside town where this boarding school is. Loved the atmosphere. Ruth Ware's amazing at writing great atmosphere. And I also loved the characters that were just like catty and drama filled. I love reading about characters like that. And the boarding school setting was also phenomenal. I loved hearing those chapters in the past that were like very dark academia vibes. So I really love this. Again, I give it five stars and yeah, I'm obsessed. I really don't think this book is talked about enough. Like I feel like it's underhyped, but I'm here to hype it. After that, I read The Death of Mrs. Westaway. This is more of a gothic thriller. It follows a girl who is a fortune teller on a boardwalk and she's just scraping by barely. It's like in the off season, so there's not any tourists really coming by. She's having a lot of trouble making rent and all of a sudden she gets a letter in the mail telling her that she 
is receiving this giant inheritance from this estate of the Westaways who died. And she doesn't know much about her family history. Her mom never told her anything. So she's thinking, okay, this might be my mom's parents that passed away that I never knew. And finally I'm getting to cash in on that. But she's kind of not sure if that's what's going on or if she just kind of got mixed up with somebody else that this family was trying to track down because she was in this will. Anyway, she doesn't know if she's scamming these people or not, but she shows up to claim this inheritance. She's meeting all of this long lost family that she doesn't really know if it's her family or not. It is crazy. But I do think this one is a lot slower than a lot of Ruth Ware's other books. And I didn't feel as attached to our main character because she is kind of like a skeevy little scammer girl. And I didn't really like that as much. I would much rather read about the like bougie, catty, drama filled girls than like this skeevy scammer girl who's kind of down on her luck so i didn't really like that as much also the gothic themes that's just not something that i connect with a lot in horror and thriller books i really don't like gothic novels so this one was just okay for me the mystery was phenomenal and again the twists were great but just the overall vibes were not matching up with what i like and that really affects my reading experience so i gave this one three out of five stars not a bad book at all just had some things that I didn't quite click with and finally most recently I read Ruth Ware's newest release which is one by one and I read this one in the winter time which is the perfect time to read this book because it follows this group of people who all work at like a tech company and they go for a company retreat at this like snowy lodge in the French mountains and they're all skiing and all of a sudden they start getting picked off one by one. So you're trying to figure out who the murderer is and this one is not a traditional thriller. I think if you go into this one, you have to think of it as like an Agatha Christie classic style murder mystery. A lot of people thought that it was boring or slow, but I don't know, I just really liked it. Even though it was predictable, it felt like a cozy Agatha with a Christie kind of reading experience. Again, the atmosphere was amazing. Ruth Ware's writing is incredible and making you feel like you're really in that location where she's writing about. So I absolutely love this one. I know again, it's an unpopular opinion, but I gave it 4.5 out of five stars. I did take off a half star because I ended up predicting the killer. I actually have a reading vlog where I read that book. So if you want to go back and watch that, I will link it. Um, but yeah, those are all of my thoughts on Ruth Ware's books, all of my ratings. Now let's go ahead and rank them. So we're gonna start with my least favorite. Again, all these books are great and I recommend them all, but this is just my least favorite. So I'm gonna start out with The Death of Mrs. Westaway at the bottom. Then I would say The Woman in Cabin 10. Then I would put In a Dark Dark Wood. Then One by One then turn of the key. And finally, we have The Lion Game at the top. I think this book is so underhyped. I really highly recommend you read it. So that is everything that I have today for this video. I hope you guys really liked hearing all of my thoughts on every Ruth Ware book, as well as that definitive ranking for me. Of course, you can have your own opinion, just like I have mine. It's totally fine. Uh, I'm gonna link all of the previous videos of other thriller authors that I've ranked in the description. I've done Sherry Lapina, Lisa Jewell, Megan Miranda, oh, and Riley Sager. So I have all of those rankings that I will link below. I'm also going to make a playlist for them. So if you want to watch all of them, feel free to do that. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.